Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And today, I'm gonna answer the top money questions that people have been asking on Google. Yes, that's right. So we did some research to see, okay, what are people asking about money out there, out there in the world? So let's just dive right in. The first one we're not gonna be shocked by is, should I invest in cryptocurrency? Hmm, listen, the cryptocurrency whole idea Will it be around forever? Maybe, we don't know. But here's the deal, it is still very volatile as we speak. So when it comes to your retirement, investing long-term, I would still recommend your 401k, your Roth IRA, a good growth stock mutual fund, those things. Make sure that all of that is covered, that you're maxing out retirement, all of that. Okay, let's be responsible in that area because that has a long track record of working. Now, if you're past that, if you don't have any debt and you have an emergency fund and you're investing in retirement, you're doing everything, and you have some money on the side that you're like, you know what, I kind of just want to, you know, yeah, I'll buy into and get some cryptocurrency. Why not? And if it all crashes and it goes down and that money leaves, it's not going to affect your net worth. You're going to be okay. If you're in that position and you want to go and invest in some of it, that's fine. But again, I want you out of debt with a fully funded emergency fund and investing in retirement first and foremost. The next question is, well, what is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is basically digital currency. So think about a dollar bill or a euro. Cryptocurrency is just the digital form of that. So it's a code, a a specific, unique line of code that is assigned to you, and that is your digital currency. So there are people all day, every day mining for more of this code, for more cryptocurrency. And the great thing that I kind of like about it, if there is something I love about cryptocurrency, is that it's not owned by a bank. It really is kind of its own thing. It came out of a reaction from the whole bail Wall Street out in 2008 during that time. So the idea of it, I'm like, that's kind of cool, but that's basically what it is, digital currency, to make a fast explanation. Next question is, where do I find a realtor? People are moving everywhere, aren't they? Yes, here in Nashville, I feel like everyone from California and Chicago are coming to Nashville right now. So I would ask around first and foremost and not go with someone that's like your best friends, aunts, cousins, decorator, turns, realtor who's been on the job for like two months, okay? If you're really gonna use somebody, find somebody that has a long track record. And you can usually find someone in the market that maybe you see their signs up or you go to a brokerage that you see, you know, the same sign in all these different houses uh, that are up for sale. And you go to that brokerage and you ask for a top realtor there. Or really what I suggest is checking out our endorsed local providers. These are pros that are Ramsey trusted and you can find them on RamseySolutions.com. The next question is how much house can I afford? Well, you always want your house to be a blessing, not a curse. So a lot of people go into the housing market and they figure out how much they can take out and the bank gives them this number and they max it out and say, that's the number. And they don't run their own numbers to figure out, okay, what is best for our situation? So here's the formula I always use when it comes to buying a home. I want you to be able to put at least 10 to 20% down on your home. I want your payment to be no more than 25% of your take home pay on a 15 year fixed rate. So if that's in the formula, that is how much house you can afford. Next is, what is life insurance and how do I buy it? Well, life insurance is something that really everyone needs specifically if there's someone dependent upon your income or what you do. So say at home moms, for instance, you're not bringing in an income per se, but you have to be replaced. The things that you do if something happens to you need to be fulfilled, right? Those duties. Uh, if If you are working outside the home and you bring home a salary and people are dependent upon you, whether that's your family or someone else, then you need life insurance. And there's really two types of life insurance. There's whole life insurance that is over the course of your whole life. It's more expensive and there's a really bad investment deal in it. They put your money in investment with a really low return. It's pretty crappy. Or there's term life that you can do, you know, for 10, 20, 30 years, a term of your life. And it's more inexpensive. So I always use Xander Insurance. This is the best company because they shop all different types of insurance companies to find you the best rate possible. So make sure to check out Xander Insurance. How much car can I afford to finance? Well, since I am answering this question on The Rachel Cruz Show, and here we don't believe in financing cars, 
The answer would be, how much car can you pay for with cash? Mm-hmm, that's right. Is it $1,000? Okay, you get a $1,000 car, $2,000, $3,000. You want to spend cash for your cars. The car payment is the one type of debt that's like, ugh. It kind of kills me because you're borrowing money and paying interest on something that traditionally just goes down in value. And so being able to save up and pay for your cars, and cars have become this like ridiculous thing in our world. I'm not mad at nice cars. I think they're great when you can pay cash for them. But your car is to take you to point A to point B, right? It's a very like tactical thing. It's here to here to here. And we've made it this big deal and you have to have all this fancy stuff and it's so great and it has to look a certain way or be this brand. Listen, your car is your car. Don't let it steal from you. The average car payment now on a new car is close to $600, you guys, $600. What if you had invested that $600 every month from age 18 to age 65, you would have millions of dollars, okay? so. The car payment is wasting your money. I'm telling you, don't take out a car loan. Pay cash for your cars. The next question is, what is debt consolidation and should I do it? So what debt consolidation does is you usually pay a company to go in and say, okay, I'm gonna take all of your debt, so your four credit cards here, two car loans, um, a personal loan, you know, all this stuff, and I'm gonna consolidate it into one debt with a locked-in interest rate usually. And that's what you're gonna do. And so a lot of people think, well, if I can get a lower interest rate than maybe what I'm paying on my debt, this is a good deal. But listen, it ends up not being a good deal because in order to get out of debt, it is your behavior that has to change, not the math. It's not a math problem we're dealing with with debt. It is your behavior. And so what you really wanna focus on is say, okay, I can do this. I don't need to pay a company to try to help me get out of debt. No, you can do it. Now, the one type of debt consolidation I would consider is student loans. So if you have multiple student loans, you can consolidate that to a lower interest rate because student loan debt is the one type of debt you usually won't go back into. Again, the idea of debt consolidation, you feel better in some way when it's all consolidated, but it doesn't change your behavior and your heart towards debt. And that's what I want you to change. And in the process of paying off your debt, smallest to largest, like we teach, it gives you this idea of behavior change. It's giving you this hope that not only you can do it, but that it's not a math problem. It's a you problem, right? Our personal finance, it's, it's us that is making it, not the math. So there's something powerful when you do it versus consolidating all of your debt. Now, one thing Google won't tell us is how you get financial peace. <laughs> and true financial peace is about freedom, where you live like no one else, so later you can live and give like no one else. And that's my hope for you, is that you can get to this place where you take control of your money and create a life you love.